Okay, what do we make together? Um, honestly, everything. Uh, if there's a chance that we can make it instead of buying it, we'll try. Uh, part of the cult of done is that failure is success. Uh, because you try, it counts. And especially for kids who are being brought up in our current educational system, which doesn't include failure. Um, social promotion means that you've got kids in grade three who cannot renounce the alphabet from start to finish. They, they can't. They can't read. We got kids coming out of grade eight that have grade two reading level. They get to grade nine and that's the first time they can fail and they right. fail. So half of it's just teaching them to fail. Um, things that they make range from um, goofy little stuff like Vibrobots. Now, Vibrobot is a very simple kind of a robot. It, it isn't really a robot in, in any measurable way. It's a motor that has an um, offset weight, so it vibrates. Uh, this is the same way that the, the vibration in your phone or your pager works. Is it's a, a motor that has a, an eccentric weight, and as that weight spins, the whole thing shakes. Right. So you take a motor and you attach an eccentric weight to it, you use a battery to run the motor, and you put it on legs that are going to be as close to frictionless as possible, and as it vibrates, it shakes and moves around the table. Right. right? Um, but there's nothing complicated to it. There's, there's no electronics. It's just a motor and a battery. Right. Um, it's easy to make. It takes a few minutes to make, and it does something. And so much of, the, of the, the world of children today has become virtual, right? right. They, they watch TV and magical stuff exists in the television. And with the advances that we've made in imaging and all that other stuff, fantasy comes to life all the time, right? right? You can't tell that it's stop motion anymore. It doesn't look like crap, right? And you, you take this fantasy world they live in and the, the fantasy world of the computer, which they all live in, right? Whether it's a video game or whether it's something like Webkin's, the, the world is magical already, and they have very little control over their physical reality, and they don't do anything with their hands anymore. Right. So when you start to look at um, what happens to people when they don't do stuff, you know, there's something intrinsic to the human condition that makes you want to make things or create things or cludge things, and if they don't do that, something breaks in them. Right? It's like part of your insides go dead, and it's a chance for them to say, that thing, I did it. You know, when, when, when they've dressed up the room that their Webkin's animal lives in, what did they really do? I mean, they, they pushed some stuff around the screen. Whee! You know, that, that's, I mean, it's great training for being a knowledge worker, but it isn't anything real, right? When they can pick up a, a Vibrobot, hey, just, you've got lots of tape. Andrew, 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 I need your keys. Keys? Yeah, because I need to get something out of your locker. I want to show a Vibrobot. Oh, wait, it's not locked. It's not locked? Oh, awesome. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so if you dig in your locker, there's one to the ass, and lots of video stuff. Yeah. And here's your Vibrobot. So, your Vibrobot got reconnected. Does it work? Look at that. So, What's your Vibrobot made of? Let's get more of your face here. Um, it's mostly made out of a water bottle. It's mostly made out of a water bottle, right? And the water bottle has what attached to it? What is this stuff? Um, um, a hanger. Right. And then we have this motor. Then we made a little weight. So when the weight spins around, what happens to the Vibrobot? It turns. It shakes like crazy. What are these things? Um, um, they're um, bottle caps. But what are they doing on your robot? They're being like eyes. Right. <laughs> and we've got a battery pack that has a built-in switch, which makes it easier to build. So there's two connections. And they're just little tiny solder connections. You can do these with clippies. So you don't even need to do solder, right? And you turn them on, and what does he do? He wanders around the table. And, and, and that's all he does, right? He's not complicated. So do you have fun making stuff like this with your dad? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite part about it? Um, putting, putting his butt on. Putting his butt on. cap. <laughs> so, five-year-olds have their favorite things, one of which is, well, biology 
and <laughs> they can apply it to their world, right? And and sure, you, I mean, you've got you've got you know the Robo Sapien, which is an awesome robot, and we have Robo Sapien at home and some of Robo Sapien's friends. But it, it was it was the fantasy that was handed to you, right? It's it's the difference between building the Lego kit according to the instructions and building the Lego kit according to your mind. And that's fallen away. You know, when, when, when kids today build Lego kits, they get, they get more and more complicated. And they're taking away the general pieces in favor of specialty pieces. Right. right? So you're building the Harry Potter Lego, or you're building the Indiana Jones Lego, and you're playing with that on your Wii, right? So you're playing Lego Indiana Jones on the Wii, mm -hmm. and your, your fantasies are being contained. Nobody else has a robot that looks like this. Mm -hmm. Nobody else thought a water bottle would be a great body for a robot. Right. Nobody else has built one of these. But, Except Amy's. Well, Amy's is different. What's the body on Amy's? Um, it's an Altoids tin. Yeah, it's mints. So what got you into this? When you were young, did you do any, any makers? Um, I used to try. Yeah. I, I took a lot of things apart, and that became kind of troublesome for my parents. Uh, how did I get into it? Um, I, I'm, I'm more a child of the 80s than anything else. Right. And the end of the 80s was an interesting time because that's when we were moving from the BBS culture to the culture of the internet, right? So I was there for the beginning. I had I had an ARPANET account, you know, when, when I went to Sheridan College in the early 90s. In the early 90s, all of Sheridan College shared a 56K connection to the internet. Like, it, it, People today think, you know, oh, dialogue, oh, that's how can you even live? Our whole college ran on that, right? So being there in the beginning and being the kind of person I am, I'm, I'm what they call a systems person. So I like to work with networks and I like to work with systems of objects. And what I've learned as I've grown older, you know, from self-identifying as a hacker, you know, I, I go to DEF CON and, and I do that kind of thing. Um, Self-identifying that way and then turning that into a career means that I spend a lot of time not just hacking computers or you know whether you want to look at it from the good guy, bad guy, white hat, gray hat, black hat thing, but also hacking systems and hacking people, right? And my big challenges now aren't to hack individual computers, my big challenges now are to hack a whole organization. So how do you take a publicly traded corporation and change it, fix it, take it apart, unravel the mess in the middle, glue it together, and send it on its merry way? And you know, from the kind of person who you know does this kind of stuff, take it apart and put it back together again, learn how it works, to go from that to I do this with a corporation on a day in day out basis. It just means that you're approaching the world in a way that says there is no magic. I can take it apart, I can understand it, I can alter the insides, and I can put it back together again.